horses on New Year's Eve, walking down my Brooklyn street. And I saw fireworks in your eyes. I was falling, falling, falling one year ago at this time. Now I'm trying, trying, trying to get back my mind. I'll take my photographs, wrap them in bubble wrap. I'm leaving for the weekend, or maybe for the year. I'll secure all my edges, all the fragile remarks that were. Hey, how's it going? Well, as you can imagine, I'm quite anxious to get back to the actual bus project. And in fact, next week, I will be showing you how you too can build your own storm windows for your school bus, which tightens it up quite a bit when the weather is cold outside. Uh, but this week, I'm still sidetracked on Empire Building, so it's going to be back down to the mini barn where I'm going to build a loft ladder for the loft I built last time. Stay tuned. So the project for today is uh, building a loft ladder for the loft I just built in the mini barn. If you don't like math, just bear with me because I'm not going to use math, but I'm just going to go real quick how you could. Um, what I did is I laid a ladder up at the angle I wanted, and I took the rise over run, 91 and a quarter over 29 and a half. So if we were using math, we'd want to know what's the length of that slanted line there. What are the two angles? Uh, the slanted line being the hypotenuse. This dude way back when, named Pythagoras, with a really cool name and a cool way to spell it, came up with the cleverly named Pythagorean Theorem, which stated the sum of the squares, I mean the square of the hypotenuse, equals the sum of the squares of the two remaining sides. So that means if we take the uh, rise over run squared, or the rise squared plus the run squared, take the square root of that, we will get the actual length of that guy, which is 95.9. Um, and that's from the bottom of the floor. That's the inside cut at the bottom of the floor there. So if you were doing this, you'd want to be aware that the actual uh, piece of wood you need is longer. In this case, you'd need 10 foot. So now to calculate those two angles. Well, you may also recall from your high school math that uh, the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So you can see the sine of the top angle, for example, is 29.5 divided by 95.9. Now that is the sign. To get the angle, we want to uh, take that ratio and use what's called the inverse sign, at least on your Windows calculator. Some of the old ones may call it an arc sign. And so you can see using that, we can get the two angles. And as a double check, if you add them together, you'll notice that the total is uh, 90 degrees. So since the angle of a triangle is, uh, the degrees is always 180, we got one 90 degree angle and then these other two. So that's how you would use uh, math to do it. Um, I'm going to, let's see how to use a carpenter square. All right, now let's see if I can figure out how to do this with a carpenter square. So the rise over run, I converted that to feet and I rounded a little bit. Okay, so that seven and a half and two and a half ratio is what I'm gonna use on the square. Um, now that's in feet and this is in inches, but the ratio is the same. So I'm gonna set the square here at two and a half inches on this side and you can see I've got it at seven and a half inches on this side and so now that should give me my proper angles. Alright so if we if we think of this this two by eight is laying you know slanted ways as it will go against that thing there then what this represents is the floor here and the uh, wall here. This is where I'm going to cut the bottom and this is the ratio I want so now, though, if this was uh, laying slanted, this this would be up. This would be level or plumb. This would be level here, right? So if I mark this spot here, that's 24 inches of rise right there. So I had six lengths of the square, which was, and I marked that spot, which was right there, and I needed another 20, well, a little less than 20 inches more. So I measured that spot to here. Then I set the square up there at the right angle and um, I made this line here. Alright, let's see if it fits. Nope, it's too long. 
oh, I see what happened. See, what I did is I measured it correctly, but I measured it to the top there, and I should have I should have measured my cut to here, to start about here, right? And I measured it to the top of the rise there, so that's what I did wrong. Yeah, so I need to go 19 and a quarter minus 7 and a half, and that's 11 and 3 quarters. I'll just keep carving away at this thing till it fits. <laughs> there we go. All right, so here's the final way you can do. I'm not recommending this, uh, but you know, if you're if you have to build something and you're a total beginner and you're completely intimidated by math and using a carpenter square or whatever. When I first started building stuff on my own, I used to do everything this way because I just didn't have the skills. I was trying to build a, a roof for a shed, and I was completely baffled at how in the world could you ever figure that angle out. And uh, I didn't know how to do it with trig. This is a long time ago. And I asked a friend of mine, he said, just lay a board up and do it that way. So, oh, it was like a whole world opened up for me. So what you could do is, you see, I've got my other riser here, and I just laid it up at the angle I wanted. Okay, so then you could lay a piece of scrap up like that and mark this right there. And then that's going to give you your angle for the floor. So then you cut that first and, uh, and then lay it back up and then do something similar up here. Uh, I'm, you know, every now and then I will still do that. And in fact, that is exactly the way I did uh, measured for the solar roof rack so it fit the contour of the roof from a couple of a couple of videos back. That's exactly how I did it. I just laid up a piece of board there and, and did it that way. So here's what I'm going to do this part. Um, so I just kind of laid this ladder up here uh, where I want. It's at the same angle. And uh, so... I'm just going to do the same as the ladder, so I put my square in here and measure from the floor to the top of the tread on the ladder, it's 11 and a half inches, so these are 11 and a half inches apart. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same. You can see I bought a square. The main thing I got was these. You put them on the square, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this ladder out of the way. I'm going to put the square so it's... Uh, um, level with the floor and plumb, and then I'm going to put these on to mark that angle. There's something to be said. So there it is, all finished. Um, let me show you around real quick. And I know I'm always saying it, but it's always true. It's dark in Oregon in the winter. Sorry about that. But you can see up here on the loft, I made these shelves. So I got shelves and um, I'm making more shelves here on this side and up here. And then I'm gonna have more shelves down there and uh, so I can store all that worthless junk that I got from my parents, old books and all that stuff you drag around, the, the little kid art from when my kids were little and that kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, I will have a place to put all that stuff and then I can move into my bus and uh, instead of getting rid of my clutter, I built a mini or I got a mini barn and put it all in there, I guess, huh? Okay, well that's it for this week. Next week putting storm windows on a school bus, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, thanks to you, those of you who have been posting comments, subscribing, 
and also I know some people watching or posting videos I'm watching too there's a lot of really good stuff out there and uh, keep it up I, I like it anyway uh, you guys take care I'll talk to you next time later